Hi guys, in this box we have the IPS i5, which we were thinking of bringing in, so we're gonna, we bought one in, a demo model, a brand new unit, um, one of the first from the batch. We brought that in because we think it actually fits a really nice little market, which is ultra portable. Um, as you can see in this box, it's not exactly very big, um, and look at the width of the box. So this i5, just open it up, comes with a panel box, Okay, well there it is. Now, if you like something, know something amazing about this, if you haven't heard it already, it is six centimeters wide. <laughs> How crazy is that? I mean, look at it. So a 14 inch wheel, 350 watt motor, not the most pow powerful motor in the world, not the biggest wheel in the world, uh, 245 watt hour battery with a four hour charge time. Official spec, that is. Um, so there it is. Incredibly light, it's about 7.5 um, is the official, I think, spec, um, but we measured out 7.8, so 7.5, 7.8 kilograms. Um, there it is, it comes with your charger. Let me just open this up. Oh, it's actually a Diddy charger as well, to match the, <laughs> match the smallness of the inside. So there it is, tie or blocks, like a miniature version. Um, all the other charge you're used to seeing three pin. Uh, let's have a look at the stats on this. So it is 1.1 amp, so it's 67.2 volt, 1.1 amp. UK cable, I think it also comes with a US cable in this box. Doesn't actually mean yours will come with both. And it's got a valve extension in that box as well. And a user manual. My wheel, my way. So, is the user manual in English? Chinese text at the start, and it's all—it's also in English. Okay, let's get this on charge, shall we? Before we do, you got a light at the front, you got a light at the back, power button, charge port on there, foot plates fold down. What you may notice is they're in a slight V shape; they're not dead flat, um, and apparently, that's better for riding yet to be seen, um, but of course being so thin, you actually need your legs in pretty tight. Um, some would argue that it's too thin, uh, because you're, if you stand naturally, you're stood like that. Whereas with this, you need to put your legs in that much. But don't forget, it is filling a niche. Um, it's almost like end of journey type unicycle. So you wanna go in your car 15 miles, park on the outside of town, and then travel in or catch a train, and you just slot that up, you know, it's tiny. It, it's, Smaller and thinner than a briefcase. So, um, yeah. So, anyway, let's get this on charge. Was going to plug it in, um, but you can see there's a, there's a slight problem here. The UK cable included. Uh, so, that might be a QC process we'll have to put in place to make sure that you've actually got the right type of cable. Okay. I have one in the warehouse, so that's all cool. Got loads of them. You may not, so I say we will, we'll check that if we uh, do stock them. Right, so the first thing I'm going to check, um, what you've got is you've got a needle screw cap on here, it doesn't just pull off. And it's held on with that rubber piece there, so you shouldn't be able to lose it. Triangular, three pin. So let's see, without it on, does it spark is the question. It does not spark when you connect it up, power on. And red it goes. So let's let that charge up. Diddy, look at it, tiny. And of course, when it's charged, um, it goes green. So red when charging, green when charged. Just a case of unplugging. Okay, right. It's powered up, it's got a button on the side there. Whoa, <laughs> it's so small. All right, put the plates down. Wow, you think of the profile of that. Yeah, it's very, very agile, very small jump up. Oh, oh wow, those foot plates, yeah, they really, they're like that. They are pushing your feet towards. I'm not sure if you can catch that on video. But it does tighten up that whole, that whole center area there. It pushes them into a position where you've got to be tight against the unit. Wow. 
It does. I mean, it, it's just different in terms of the foot plate positioning, um, but completely doesn't make it any less rideable. It feels very firmware on it. It's very solid. There's no play, so you just it's, it's instantaneous. It's, wow. Okay. That is pretty smart, like that. Okay, the tire pressure is set at 80 PSR. Uh, that is the maximum tire pressure. Let me just have a quick look what the minimum is. I pumped that up to 80. The tire, for your own reference, is 14. It's 14 inch by 1.50. It's a Kenda tire. Yeah, minimum 50 PSI, maximum 85 PSI, sorry. So I set it at 80. And that's 3.5 to 5.9 bar if you're working bar. So there's the power button on the side there. As long as we turn it on, oh, it spins. It spins if you turn it on, so it does come on even if it's picked up. How come if it goes on its side? I wonder. Oh, well, there's the alarm. That's noisy, isn't it? Turn it off. Turn it back on again. So that's the sort of noise you're gonna get. Balance itself back up. There we are. Right, shall we take it for a ride? But I mean, it's, wow, it's incredibly agile. Oh, yeah. <laughs> really noticeable. So, woo! If you want to go one-legged, this, this is really easy. It's so thin and so at the height of the leg that, yeah, wow. Okay, liking it so far. Good. Yeah, like that. Right, let's do some riding inside first. I'm hoping the weather's going to hold out so I can get a lot of this done today. Uh, we got down there. So we've got, there's an application, an IPS lab application, which I'll install. Um, and then I will try and monitor and see what readout it's giving, etc., etc. So let's go and have a quick look at that and do a ride. Before we do, quick one. Nine bot E versus I5. So number one E. There it is there for Oh that lights come on. How's that happened? Anyway, I heard it beep, so there's obviously a way of turning the light on that I don't know of yet. Tap. Not a clue. How's that work? <laughs> I guess I'll find out. I guess I will find that out. Um, the sticker on the side here is slipping. The nice sticker. Uh, but there we are. That might be from going one legged, to be fair. Oh. Ah, oh, there you go. Yeah. Oh. There you go. Wow. is that how brilliant that's genius wow IPS that's a nice touch <laughs> uh, I'd be all day small things as they say anyway this is the e turn it off there we go yeah so you can see it's massively thicker it's a, it's a huge difference I mean this is a big chunky beast in comparison obviously it's not a like for like because this is a 16 inch wheel this is the 14 but you can see, you get a general idea. It's probably the most common one out there. Let's put that back and let's, uh, let's get into this ride in. Okay. And it emits very little noise. Very little noise. You might just be able to hear that. What I would say is when you're undoing the uh, cap here, to make sure to support that, to hold it still, because it tries to turn around when you're undoing it. This is going around like that all the time. You like to snap it off and you, you don't want that. So just support that by doing that and undo it with the hand. Um, but that's neat, isn't it? <laughs> um, you can also turn the light on and off in the app, but let's get, a, let's get onto the ride in the app. So you might be able to see the angle that my feet are on, the tilting in, which feels very strange if you're using used to using a conventional electric unicycle but as you can see it is 
<laughs> incredibly thin. So the six centimeters is this part. Uh, it doesn't include the uh, foot plates, of course. So here's the application, uh, launched it up. You need an APK for the Android version. iOS is on the uh, App Store already. Uh, if you search for I am IPS, uh, but we'll click on that. Connecting to device. Boom, and there it is. Different than the uh, iOS version. But it's giving you all the heads up readouts. You know exactly where you are. Total distance traveled, you can see max speed, 11.49 have gone kilometers. Let's just keep that as it is for now for you guys who work in kilometers. I'll see if we can change it to miles per hour. But it feels, it feels pretty stable. It's not wobbling about at that speed, it's just, you know, if I, if I, if I go on a straight in a second, I'll film down so you can see this. Yeah, it's very solid. I mean, I'm on, I'm on warehouse smooth concrete, so uh, we will see once we delve in further and explore different terrains, but at the moment, yeah. And so that's 15 kilometers an hour. And that is running sweet as. You can see here, look. <laughs> Your, uh, let me try and zoom in a bit more. Kilometers per hour, over how many minutes? <laughs> That's quite good. I like that little graph. Uh, max speed, distance, total average. Just having a look. So what's this here then? This, I don't really know what that is. Oh, that's done something. Oh, what was it? Oh, sharing to uh, Facebook. Okay. Discard. Right, okay, that's taking a, uh, a screenshot. Oh, okay, that's very, very handy, isn't it? Takes a, takes a photo for you to share. That's pretty neat, like that. Lots of people share that. Uh, you got the models, the serial numbers in there, balance adjustment, so presumably you can go into there and change the uh, level ground, so that's the calibration if you wanted to change that. Um, battery, showing your output voltage. Capacity, 245 watt hour. That's very good, shows you the versions. Very in-depth app, I like that. It's good uh, Good work on the app. What does this do? Pull down, oh, okay, open app again. That exits and tries to take you to the uh, thing. Oh, is it gonna also connect? It's a feature that's kind of missing in the Gotway. Sometimes they do connect, but very often you have to re keep reselecting them all the time. So that's, um, yeah, that reconnects up and goes straight back onto it. That's good. So you got your wattage, you know it's a 350 watt motor with a max peak, as it says, of a, of a thousand, but this this rating here has only got 500 on it, so I'm assuming that it isn't. Um, you can't expect to peak out that power. 500 is the maximum it'll give out. Oh, it beeped at me then, so I got the beep up. I'm only messing around trying to see what it does, so. So that's, that's pretty reasonable speed. Um, the alarm is fairly quiet. Um, it's quite a weak alarm. I mean, when you saw it screech when it was on its side, it seemed quite loud, but those, let's see. So the beeps are coming in at about 18 and a half. 18 and a half, um, it starts beeping. Now let's just try that again, for you guys to see. bit of a bump here, so I have to do it after this, there we go. Well, there we go, so the maximum speed I've gone is 19.2 kilometers uh, an hour. Let's see if we can change the uh, the metrics. Ah, so you've got speeds here, look, so you can set max speed 12 or 20, so that's the only adjustment you've got there. Uh, version, checking, searching for updates. So this is the firmware on the actual unit. A new version is available, please put the vehicle at stand on level ground, operate after we start the vehicle. So I'm gonna leave that for now in case there's something funky about it, but I will do the update and I'll show you the update process. But for now, let's leave it. Um, I can change the device name, so I could have Ian is a numpty. Um, let's have a look, voltage, capacity, BMS version, searching for updates. Okay, new version available for that as well. So this can all be updated. Um, wow, okay, serial number, that's all good. Doesn't look like you can change the metrics. Bluetooth, it's got an arrow there, but it doesn't do anything. So it does for that, but no, I don't think that should have an arrow there. Um, okay, let's go back. I wonder if you can tap on here to change 
So none of these do anything. Um, I think we're stuck with kilometers an hour. Right, well that's the application. I don't think I've really tell you any more with the app. In terms of it tilting to turn the light on, you can't do that whilst you're riding along, not without a lot of leaning. <laughs> so you haven't got to worry about that coming on. Um, but if you, you needed it, um, you just, like that, job done. That is awesome, I like it. Absolutely fine. What I did get was a weird beep all the way down. It went beep, 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 beep continuously. I had to put it to a stop to stop it doing it. So I'll try that again. Right, pulling up this hill, no problem. Um, and I'm not sure that beep was initially, I think it's not going too fast, but it just didn't stop beeping no matter how I slowed down. But this time, the second time, it didn't do that at all. Um, it beeped, and as I slowed down, it stopped. So, uh, beep didn't stop. So, it falls up this hill quite nicely. Quite surprised, it's such a small motor. It's such a small motor, getting up that hill, that's, that's pretty impressive. Okay, got hands free. I'm going to go down the hill again. Um, you might not be able to see this app. It's very uh, bright, so it's shining off the screen. But um, so I've got a yellow. There we are, 19. So that's the beeping because I was going too fast. First attempt, I slowed down. It's still beeping, but that's that's fine this time. Oh, there we go. Just briefly. Um, but there we are. I stopped again. Right, let's try it up here. So this is going to help. Oh, maximum wattage that was. Some of that. Yeah, so that's right peak. So I'm going up this hill now, where the camera was up the top before. I can push it faster, but it's showing a max output of 500 watts. But perhaps that's a restriction on the application, because it's carrying me up here no problem at all. Top of the hill. Dogs wondering what's going on. <laughs> right, let's try that again. It does do something a bit funky downhill at speed. So that's slowing down. Still, still, I mean, that's 19 kilometers an hour. If the app's right, that's, uh, that's a good speed. Right, let's try it up again. So the motor, the voltage on the motor is 500. It doesn't go any, it's, it's obviously outputting more than that. It's just jammed against 500. Right, but I can go up to, you know, I can hit 18 kilometers an hour. 18 kilometers an hour going up here on this little, uh, this little wheel. That's, uh, yeah, the climb, that's impressive. Okay, this is uh, quite a slope, this one. 
quite hard to uh, show you it but you can see the sort of slope it is um, so let's give it a go Okay, I mean, it's coming out incredibly strong. Um, in terms of pulling power, um, the braking seems seems nice. If you ride it as a 350 watt motor, <laughs> so you're not expecting the world of it, um, it's absolutely fine. It's like pulling up that hill, it feels really strong. There's no issue at all. Trying it again, it's quite hard to believe. There's no, there's no sign it's jittery. I should imagine if you really tried to to pummel it up the hill as hard as you could. I should imagine you get it to uh, cut out or jitter a bit, but riding it safely and normally, I mean, you see I'm not exactly going slow. No issue. Pretty impressive for such a tiny little thing. Right, okay, let's head out. Uh, I'm going to do a distance test and I've also got to obviously try it off-road so they're probably combined the two it is not designed for off-road really at all it's designed for you know yeah, I'm spinning around on one leg in a city commuting um, but I need to do a distance test don't really want to do that all on the road so I'll do a combination of road for distance test and a little bit of trail it won't be hard off-road obviously it's a tight thin wheel um, so yeah, we'll, we'll just do like normal trails. So you guys might adventure off a little bit onto cycle trails and stuff like that, and nice and smooth, but on not tarmac. So I'm not talking serious off-road, I'm just talking gravelly, sort of real fine, compacted surface. So uh, we'll do that as part of the, uh, the distance test and to try and round it all off. Um, I'm getting where my ankles are here. Can actually get the camera to it the bone on your ankle there that's digging in and pushing against the side here of the casing and that's uh yeah that's starting to hurt but again that's just going to be conditioning it's the same with every single electric unicycle oh and look look on the bottom of my foot uh, it's an ips sticker <laughs> so yeah you need to you need to get some stronger glue than that well, I think that's from doing one leg, to be honest. But it actually, that where that sticker is, is right where the bone is. No, it's not quite. Sorry, to say again, it's not. <laughs> I thought it was, it's not. You can indeed ride it without putting your feet against the side of the unicycle. So you've got no friction at all. But that is incredibly difficult to ride. In. <laughs> and it's not comfortable because you've got no real control over the center section there. So, yeah, I wouldn't really advise that. But yeah, conditioning is what it is. Good old conditioning. This is neither a nine bot or a Gotway. It's an IPS. An IPS. Hold that a sec. All right, see the power button on the side? Nope, that's the GoPro mount. Oh, what is it? Yeah, press it then. Okay, and then fold the foot plates down and see what you think of it. Is it hot? Well, that's weird because that bit hurts. Yeah, it's just the mount, it's not usually on there. Go down the road with it then, and he's off. What do you think of it? It's okay. It's okay? Is that it, is it? Yeah. It's quite good. Is it? Harder to balance. Though. Harder to balance, you reckon? Any other views on it? And these plates don't go right down. 
You don't go right down, you notice that? Yeah. It's to force your feet inwards because it's so thin. Right, next uh, tester. What do you think? Quite good. Quite good. As Toby was saying, we got it's good. It's Toby and quite no, good. Toby says all right. I agree with him actually, it's alright. Is it quite nice being slim or not? I don't know, I'm not slim. <laughs> <laughs> so, heading off on the trip now. All road to start with. The weather's pretty bad. Quite windy, threatening to rain. I'm having that long beat thing again. little beats. There we go. Slow right down. Slow right down. Still beeping. Still beeping. Still beeping. Stops. <laughs> Don't know why. Strange. Um, looking at the app, there's no excessive power output. No one near Nowhere near the speed limit. In fact, and now I'm at standstill. Oh, stop now. Right, set off again. We're going to ignore that for now. We're just going to get on with the range test. I'm not sure why it's doing that. So it seems to be related to going downhill. Um, start going a hill. It beep. It's doing the beep when you go too fast. Just fine. So it's beeping to let you know. Right like now, that's fine. Slow down. It stops. Ride just below it, you don't get any beeps. You know, that's fine. Um, we'll try another hill. So that, I can keep it beeping by overspeeding and then backing off and it stops. But on the downhill, seem to have a situation where it just beeps. Not all the time, but sometimes. Can't really figure out why. Uh, but we've got a very steep downhill coming up. Um, so we'll have another look at that in a minute. I mean, I'm so used to the speed of the Gotways <laughs> that obviously it's a completely different beast. Um, here's a hedgerow, so you can sort of see the speed I'm going. Below beep, that's the speed it's going. Um, I can't show you the app, I've only got one phone with the app on it, I'm filming with it. Um, but it's, it's around about 16 kilometers an hour, 16, 17 kilometers an hour, which is uh, according to the app, which is, uh, Pretty neat. Oh, we've got a car coming. Well, luckily I'm thin enough so I can actually get through. No issue. 17 degree hill, it says. Oh, here's a distance. Seconds. Distance, one mile. Speed, 9.6 miles per hour. Split speed, 9.6 miles per hour. 9.6, which is actually the average speed on that readout. Some horses there. Um, so we'll have a look to see what this hill does now. So I'm going to slow it down. There we go. So, not sure, and now I'm going to go really, really slow. So I'm hardly any travelling any speed at all. So this is slow. Let's just increase a bit of speed. No problem. Oh, now it's beeping again. Yeah, so it doesn't like the power out, but for some reason, Tracker. Doesn't like the power output. I'm not sure. I'm going nowhere near as fast as downhill. I must be doing about four, uh, five miles an hour, possibly six miles an hour. It's like a little bird trapped in the wheel. I'm assuming when it levels out, it'll stop, will it? Yes, there you go. Okay. So it's downhills. Not sure, but that was a 17 degree anyway. But it doesn't doesn't do it normally. <laughs> Just ride along. It's no issue. No beeping. And to be fair, if you slow right down, it does stop. But I'm almost down to I don't know three, four miles an hour. I'll test it again once I get to that position. 
Okay, this is a, a, a really steep hill. It's probably not as steep as the 17 degree we just came down, but it's pretty steep. It's asking quite a lot. Um, probably not something you're gonna ride up very often, I wouldn't have thought. It climbs up and up. As I'll find out, there must be a sign somewhere telling you that. Um, I was gonna read up the motor power on the app, and I've slowed my speed right down as you should do. It's a pretty sensible thing to do, to be honest. Uh, going up steep hills. Um, it's getting me up a bit at the moment. Hope this thing's reliable because now I'm a, a couple of miles out from <laughs> home. <laughs> There's no one to pick me up. Um, but I couldn't connect to the app. I just cannot get it to connect. It just says I'm having trouble reconnecting. Like the message it shows on the screen now, hopefully, if I've remembered to overlay it. Um, it just says cannot connect. Please retry. So you keep retrying it, it doesn't connect. I don't really want to turn the machine off. Usually I'll just turn the machine off, turn it back on again to uh, get to connect. But I can't do that because I don't want to lose the distance on this compared to map my ride on my phone. But it got me up that, no problem. We were just two miles in, just over. Um, and I can't get it to reconnect. I reboot, killed the app and restarted the app. Um, but I can't get it to reconnect, so I might have to turn this off. I mean, I can't connect to the, the unit anyway to see what its mileage is or what its battery percentage is. So I'll have to turn it off, get this gateway up here. I'll turn it off and uh, connect it back up again. Woo, it's windy. Right, let's retry. Off, on, okay, stabilized. Right, oh, that's falling off again. So, uh, Right, try and reconnect, I'll get back to you. Okay, that's uh, brought it back round. It works fine, turn the unit off, turn it back on again, connect up. So, back in. We've got about 75% battery, at a, just about two and a half miles. So, not doing too bad to be fair, for just a little 245 watt hour so far. Now that beeping downhill hasn't reoccurred in the last couple of miles. Uh, so I'll keep an eye on it and I'll report back, but it just sort of doesn't seem to do that anymore. It's a bit odd. <laughs> um, so let me just check where, how far we are in now. Okay, we're almost four miles in and I've got 68% battery. So it's doing well so far for a little, little squirty machine. Right, first bit of off-road. Proper job here. Look at it. Oh, it doesn't like that. There's the old beeping again. Gravel. Ugh. Oh, ow, ow, ow. Wow. That's quite hard work on such a small little wheel. Right, well, is this build for off-road? No. I have been, um, probably been riding it now for around about, I don't know, about a mile, most likely, I would have thought. Um, and on the rough stuff, it really does not hold up to what you'd expect. Um, well, or what you would expect. Uh, it's a 14 inch wheel. It's so thin, the diameter, that you hit little bumps and stuff like that. The whole thing's jittering all over the place. Um, and then if, and then if you, um, if you actually go down the steep banks and it's really, really, really stony, um, you can get thrown off quite easily and quite quick. Um, what is that noise? No idea. Um, yeah, so basically you hit stuff. Um, it's going to be quite hard to demonstrate. But it's, it's such a low clearance here. Such a really, really low clearance. So you actually knock stones and stuff. On the inner city riding, it's going to be absolutely perfect. You know, that's what you expect. It's not designed for off-road at all. So in the off-road department, not doing too well. So what I'm going to do is carry along these real nice just flat trails. And then we're going to head on back and do the continue the long distance test. See what actual... What the? John? What are you doing here? <laughs> We've lost for weeks. I've been on the road for months. What, for one wheel, one way? Yeah. The whole time. Where's Milton Keynes? You have any idea? Milton Keynes? You want, you're completely the wrong direction. You want to be having that that way. Oh. Unbelievable. Hey, I've got to carry on with this. John's lost. What? He's from one wheel, one way, a thousand miler. He's still been trying to get back home. That was three weeks ago. What? Hands, no. So whilst John's uh, here, 
you know, I've stopped him on his way back home and uh, he's given it a quick go. It's not beeping at you, John. I think it's a weight thing. Yeah, it's a weight issue, isn't it? John's just going to give some early first impressions. He's only been on it for what, uh, half a mile? Like that. It's alright, isn't it? Is that it, is it? <laughs> no, he should do reviews more often. People appreciate the honest, <laughs> straightforward approach. Honestly, honestly, I was dubious, sceptic. Uh, and it is really firm to ride. Maybe because you've got the PSI, the. Uh, it's on 80, isn't it? 80. It, goes 85. So it feels like it's uh, rattling my, my feelings and riding it on this rough ground. But it feels quite solidly put together. It doesn't feel like it's a little toy thing. But it's metal, isn't it? A metal body as yeah. well. Yeah. Uh, but it feels as though it'll take a few knocks as well, so... Well, I'm kind of hoping that if you're yeah. riding it in the city, on pavement, so you're saying you wouldn't take that on the road? I wouldn't take it... Well, I've only ridden it for a mile, and off-road. Uh, I just don't think I'm that confident yet. We're going into the city later. <laughs> Riding, as I ride my monster, on the streets, sometimes in the centre of London with the lorries and the black cabs and the red buses, I wouldn't feel as safe on this because I guess with that you've got the power to speed past things and to... You know, to but on a pavement, on a pavement, 18 kilometres an hour perfect. is too fast, isn't it? Ah, so you should be going a little bit slower. It's light as a feather. So you could pick this up, pop it in your... Even in your what kind of bird has feathers that weigh 7.8 kilograms? Ostrich? Answers below. Ostrich? Are you? Um, yeah, but I would easily put it in, even put it in my laptop bag. It's so small and so light. It's, uh, I think it's perfect. So it's end of journey commuting, isn't it, really? Yeah. It's the last closing two, three miles. Get to the train. Sub three mile journey taker, this one. Because when, when I put my monster onto a train, or even the M2 on the train, I mean, look hassle, at it. It is massive. But it's a hassle getting that on and off the train. If you put it up into the luggage racks, this will go into the overhead luggage rack on a train. And it'd be the same with most people's bags are put there. Yeah. No problem at all. So it really it's 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 its size that's its benefit, but also its downfall if you want to go on the roads and want to go faster. It's never been about speed, is it, that thing? It's not designed for speed. I think this is great. If you've got to get across town, or you've got to um, you know, park up one side of town and get across or get the train or on off buses, absolutely perfect. Yeah, so if you're gonna be picking it up a lot. Or if you've got lots of stairs to go up and things like that. Oh, yeah, yeah. I'll be on the ground. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh... Right. Okay. Well, the next bit we will do is going to be in the city. Um, city of Gloucester. So we'll try that and see what it's like there and get back to you. Takes its time, but it gets there. And that's John out on the test. He does appear to be carrying half the forest with him. Well, so to, you've uh, been out now for what? Two miles? Some of that? We've had to ditch the range test for now. I'm going to just re 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 resume that, that exact point where we left off. It's actually really good. It's solid to put together. It feels like you get used to the, the, the foot pedals that are slightly inverted. Get used to that. And that does bring your legs into this very, very silly thin little body, but get used to that. Nice. I've actually just saying there off camera that I really like it. It's nice. Yeah, because you were you were comparing it, weren't you, to the S2? To the S2, yeah. Because yeah. I, I guess you would, that's the same kind of size wheel, is it? 14 inch? 14 inch wheel, yeah. You were saying for the price you might go for the S2. But one thing that makes these a bit easier to ride than the S2 is it's taller. But the other thing you were saying is what you can put it flat. Yeah, because so it is flat rather than rolling around everywhere. So you put it onto a parcel shell somewhere. Boom. That is so light, that is like stupid. You just put it into your rucksack and you're away. All right, let's get some testing on the old, uh, on some, on some uh, city roads.
pavement, should I say. Jonathan's just going to try and go off a curb now. Don't forget any bit of speed, I thought he was going to catch the back end of it on the... Landed it though. <laughs> right, so we're just trying a bit of... Uh... <laughs> he jokes, he jokes. Not really. Uh, just trying a bit of uh, inner city riding now. Back where it's uh, comfort is really, I think. It's actually quite stable, the, the wheel is not a, it's a knife blade, it's sort of fast. It's stable, is it? Oh, he's reaching the maximum, isn't it? He's reaching the maximum. <laughs> he's letting everyone know he's there. That's a good speed, you can see the bollards going by. Yeah, it's a good speed. No. That is, it's flying really, to be fair. It is flying along. Let's go straight this way. The bollard game, you're going to do the bollard game, are you? Yeah, we just get a beef on it. Well, it comes on at 18 and a half kilometres an hour, so 12 miles an hour, approximately, isn't it? It's at 11. It's around about 11, 12 miles an hour the beef comes on. It's not beeping you going downhill though. Yeah, no, yeah, that's right. It's just a fatty. It's causing it to crash out. I'm on the uh, M Super. It's obviously an 18 inch wheel, if you don't know, and it goes up here and there. And on this, it's quite difficult to maneuver it. So John's just gonna have a quick go and see how it feels. See if it's any more maneuverable. What's that like? Is it effortless? So it turns really tight, basically. I'll tell you one other thing I've noticed, is the foot plates are quite nice and high up. Then no, when you turned in then, they were nowhere near hitting the floor. I suppose that's one of the benefits of that slight camber on the foot plates. Yeah, it? keeps them slightly higher. Yeah. So you can actually do quite tight turns. If I can capture this bit up here, as you go round this corner, and nowhere near, and if you come back down again, yeah, nowhere near touching. Well, that's quite good. Very nimble. Yeah. So in a tight space, if you're on a pavement with lots of people, that's actually very agile. Yeah, crawl speed's quite slow as well, isn't it? Yeah. It's like a 10 inch wheel almost, but being a 14. Oh. <laughs> Into the only hole. <laughs> Very well. Present, present. Beautifully done. Hello? <laughs> What's that noise? What was this? The firmware, just like the um, MCM. 
before when you jump. Excuse me. Doesn't like it. Don't like it. Still works, eh? Is it okay jumping going forwards with it though? Hey? Is it okay jumping going forwards? <laughs> so if you do, if Who you, wants to try that? Yeah, if you're going to try and jump and say go up a curb, which is kind of a common thing, isn't it? That you need to jump. We need to film that, don't we? There's no way this is going up a curb. No way. Uh, well, there is a way, but you've got, the other, you've got the other problem. If you want to jump up a curb, you've got the other problem of these being really shallow. So for any sort of stunts, I mean, look how much how much space there is. There's hardly any space. And yeah, you did that. <laughs> and, and that was me doing that. And I was only running up a curb by hand. I ran it up by hand, and it's kind of dug into the front of the curb. And yeah. Oh, got jumping up stuff. I think it's a no on this. What's it like backwards? I haven't come off and cracked my head. So. Feels fine. Feel it, it is so solid. Yeah, it does feel good. It's, I mean, it's instantaneous. There's no, there's no wobble back and forth. It's just, it's immediately reacting. It doesn't feel weak at all. Yeah. Say the balance is amazing, really. Yeah, you can you can ride it really slowly, and it and it stays. It must be because it's thin. I've never experienced that before, where you can almost just stand still. Yeah. Yeah, it's good for that. So in a town on yeah, a busy street, you will get out in front of you in a bus, and they go whoa. Yeah. Yeah, yeah real, real stable, very well balanced. I would say. I suppose because it's all dead centre. Yeah, there's nothing there to. Uh, there's no heavy battery on one side of it, is there? Or? I mean that is. Light as well. Alright, so it's a food tree. Yeah. Time to leave. Stuff. Oh, I've got a pot pig. Yeah, it's right. <laughs> That's ridiculous. Really cool. It is incredible, isn't it? It's brilliant, isn't it? It's a great design. Little tiny. Little light there after it. It is a nice thing. That's a GoPro mount, so ignore that. Is I mean even after that fall, what have I done here? That's quite noisy. Oh. That's what it's done. It's chipped the paint off there and there. Again, foot plates. They always take a beating, don't they? On all electric cycles, but I'm really done. It took quite a on the hard it, floor. It did, it? yeah. It did. Let me turn the light on. Oh, hello. Oh, I've turned it off again I randomly. Know. I don't know how I turned it off. There we go. It's a bit delicate, that, isn't it? It is. Good idea. You're going to ride it out here? Ah, oh, yeah. Well, I, I feel comfortable riding mine because it's so small. I'm riding mine out of here. Yeah, you got it, aren't you? Cheers, thank you, bye. You've got everything, John. <laughs> Should have ridden yours, eh? Shame. Real shame. Okay, we're back out on the thing. We start in the distance test now. I got Jacob with me. He's on the mini. So this is the start of the range test again, and this is the sort of paths I'm talking about off-road. Nice and smooth, solid, compacted paths. Echo! So to put it in context, it does that speed, the Mini Pro. Um, it's just slightly faster than the Mini Pro. So it's you know, it's not a slouch. Uh, it's not the fastest, as we keep saying. But if you want to just breeze along and complete relaxation, this is this is the way to do it. And, it, and you need to be able to pick it up. But I am now about three and a half miles in. Uh, we're at about 85% battery. But the battery seems to be holding up very well, if it's accurate. We'll see with the final result. But yeah, that's uh, pretty good, isn't it? 
such a small battery. So how this acts when you push it hard, like up a hill, and you're taking it up to its maximum power, is sometimes it dips forward a tiny little bit, which makes you react um, and lean back. Um, or sometimes it goes a little bit washy. I mean, all unicycles do something a little bit strange in regards to uh, when you get up to their upper limits to try and stop you from doing it, trying to make you slow down. Um, but obviously the smaller the motor and the smaller the power output, the uh, more careful you need to be. Um, but this is handling really well up steep hills. It's so powerful for what it is. I mean, it, it feels like a much bigger motor in terms of the torque to get you up. It's really good. So if you're buying one, just if you feel the pedals do something funny or foot plates as they are, then uh, pay attention and slow down a little bit. So the beeping downhill seems to have sort of stopped. Uh, I haven't had many instances of it at all since. Just get the beep, the usual going too fast beep, and that's it. Okay, we are four miles in, and the battery reads 78%. So I've done almost five miles. Uh, feet, even in this position, they do not hurt. Uh, mind you, you're talking to, about someone who's just come off a <laughs> recently off a thousand mile charity ride on electric unicycle. So, but it's yeah, it doesn't hurt. It feels very very comfortable. I've been on a little bit of off road, so it's um, yeah, so it's bumpy, so it's pretty pretty good really. Right, so I'm back out this evening to continue the test. We better test the lights out, won't we? Nice bright red light there on the back. We will try it out and continue this test, hopefully get it all finished off this evening. So, we are seven miles in almost. About point one of a mile away, seven miles in. Um, battery is reading out between 8% and 50. <laughs> Keeps jumping around, but I think it's getting low. That's why it's so up and down. It's trouble with very small batteries. It's 245 watt hour. Um, you know, it's a, it's a small metric, small capacity, um, but it's riding fine. I didn't seem to get any warnings at 8%, so I don't think it's really 8%. But we'll keep you posted. I don't want to take it too far because I am in the middle of the wilderness here, completely, as you can see. Time, Ooh, there we go. Minutes, seven miles, seconds. is it? Distance, seven miles. Seven miles. Speed, 8.4 miles per hour. Split speed, 9 miles per hour so there we go that's the average speed split speed is the average speed so you won't be able to see a lot now <laughs> there's the wheel down there might be able to see my feet just now the battery fluctuates uh when it's under pressure so it if you're going up a steep hill it suddenly drops right down from about 60 percent it was showing almost eight miles in and it was dropping down to about 10 percent so that's something to keep in mind. If you think, oh, on 60% can be ride along the flat or downhill, and you've suddenly gone up a long, or you're not even a steep slope, just a slope, it will drop right down. So you're gonna have to watch that to make sure that you're not stuck Time, out in the middle of nowhere. Here we go. Minutes, 43 seconds. Distance, eight miles. Eight miles. Speed, 8.3 miles per hour. Split speed, 7.8 miles per hour. Okay, I'm getting to the stage now where I can't really see a lot. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn this light on. If I get it to do it. Nope, can't get it to do it. Oh, it didn't like that. It thinks I've fallen off. Turn it back on again. There we are. Right. Now the actual light, you probably can't make it. So you kind of can because you can see Bruce now. Bruce. Um, he's quite some way away. Uh, he's probably five metres away. Um, so the actual light is nice and bright gives you plenty of visibility i can see a big stick there i can avoid also worth mentioning you can actually uh, turn the light on i'm not sure if i've already mentioned this with the app so you don't need to tilt on its side you don't need to stop you can just go to the app and turn it on so we've just hit the uh, nine miles mark um, and now i'm on 12 percent battery and i get a beep it's sort of stopped i say the battery is jumping all over the place but a second ago i was getting a uh, a beep which is telling me to slow right down um, so I'm getting a low battery now basically um, I'm, I'm in the middle of nowhere <laughs> I am yeah, I'm in the middle of a forest by the way um, yeah I gotta find my way back home 
And I'm on low battery. How good's that? I'll do it though. I'll find a way. But it's all part of the testing. There's Bruce there. He loves it. But I'm 9 miles, 12%. I haven't got a lot left in this at all, I wouldn't have thought. Wow. Right. We have just been walking through some of the boggiest forest I've been in for a very, very long time. Got soaking wet feet. Had to turn it off, pick it up and carry it. I stopped recording the mileage at that point, obviously. Um, and now we finally found some terra firma. 44 seconds. Distance, 10 miles. Speed, 7.8 miles per hour. Split speed, 6.2 miles per hour. Okay, so what that's just told you is I'm down to about 9% battery, 15% battery, um, or 25, depending on what it wants to read and what type of terrain I'm on, whether I'm going uphill or traveling on the flat. Um, but let's uh, finish this test now. And let's be pretty confident that some of my weight, which is about 13 and a half stone, um, is, is gonna get you a good clean 10 miles minimum, unless you're climbing up a hill the whole time you're traveling. Um, so I think that's a pretty good test, to be honest. Temperature is around about 16 at the moment, degrees C. So in those conditions, you'd expect a good clean 10 miles, no problem at all. And I think um, you should be able to eke out of it a probably 12 or 13 with my current conditions. If I carried on, I think I'll probably get another two miles. Uh, but I don't want to get stuck out in the middle of nowhere. So let's just talk about actual usable range, really, which is normal style of riding. On the ninth mile, it started to restrict me every now and again. Um, so yeah, 10 miles is, is what you'll be looking for. If you want to try and squeeze some more out of it, you'll probably get it. Especially if you're lighter, you will. Uh, flatter or warmer, you will. Um, or if you don't mind riding at half the speed. If it started to restrict me down to a maximum of 14 rather than 18.5 kilometers an hour, um, so yeah, the app, you cannot have the app in miles per hour at all, uh, but let's go and do the final thing. So that concludes that range test for such a small battery. I am amazed at 10 miles out of this thing. I really, really am. I think that is absolutely spot on. So yep. Then let's go and do the final little bit before we conclude and finish this review, the firmware update of the i5. So let's just try and um, board version, searching for updates, software is the latest version. Okay, it says it's the latest version anyway. Hmm, I thought at the time it said it wasn't the latest version. Um, so I can't show you the update anyway, unfortunately. Um, but you can change the operation mode, so you can say sport, comfort or sport mode. So it makes it the, the foot plate softer or sharper. It's on sport as standard, I haven't changed that, put it that way. Um, but there we go, operation mode. So there is no firmware to uh, update. It is the latest. Okay, well that's where you would do it if you were gonna do it. Well, I hope that review has helped you guys. Um, it's pretty in depth, it's pretty long, but I, I know you guys appreciate a, a complete full in-depth overview. <sighs> Lovely. Um, of these things, it has been tested fully. Um, it's now beeping, which I think is signifying a, the battery running out. So that's how close it was actually, so it was a good job it didn't go much further and took a shortcut through the boggiest wood ever. But if it's helped, please like, subscribe and share the video. And of course, check out the links in the description if you wish to purchase one or another electric unicycle you're interested in. See you guys.